In this devotional, I'm going to share with you three thoughts from Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verses 9 through 16, where I'll ask the question, what is lovely about the bride? Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verses 9 through 16 says, You have captivated my heart, my sister, my bride. You have captivated my heart with one glance of your eyes, with one jewel of your necklace. How beautiful is your love, my sister, my bride. How much better is your love than wine and the fragrance of your oils than any spice. Your lips dripped nectar, my bride. Honey and milk are under your tongue. The fragrance of your garments is like the fragrance of Lebanon. A garden locked is my sister, my bride. A spring locked, a fountain sealed. Your shoots are an orchard of pomegranates with all choicest fruits, henna with nard, nard and saffron, calamus and cinnamon, with all trees of frankincense, myrrh and aloes, with all choice spices, a garden fountain, a well of living water, and flowing streams from Lebanon. Awake, O north wind, and come, O south wind, blow upon my garden, let its spices flow. Song of Solomon is a romantic poem. It's an epic love poem, as I've said in some of these other videos, that depicts the great love that Solomon has for his bride. And when he sees his bride, when he's describing her, you can start to see all of the things that he finds so lovely about her. And in it, we can start to see how we, as husbands and wives, should think about our spouses. With that in mind, here are three thoughts from Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verses 9 through 16, answering the question, what is lovely about the bride? Thought number one, the bride's love. Solomon, as he's writing this epic poem, talks about her love, her love that she has for him. And he is absolutely floored by the fact that this lovely maiden, this wonderful person that he has encountered, loves him so very deeply. And it's one of those mutual sorts of things where she loves him and he loves her and they are both absolutely floored at the wonder of the other person. And when we find the one that we are going to marry, ideally this is how we feel. That we become enamored with one another to the degree that we love even the love that they have for us. And this is what Solomon sees in this lovely, wondrous person. He sees that she loves him and loves him in a way that is beautiful and worthy of an epic poem. And this might be something that we ought to look for in our own marriages, in our own relationship with our spouse. Are we loving one another well? Thought number two, the bride's beauty. Most of the Song of Solomon talks about the bride's beauty, and it reiterates it again and again. You have all of this flowery language about fawns and things running down a cliff and all of this sort of poetic stuff that's going on, where if you're not necessarily a poetic person in nature, you might look at it and say, oh, I, I don't really get what's going on here, but I've read poems before. This seems like the kind of thing that's happening. But what Solomon's doing here is simply describing the great beauty that his bride has. And when he thinks about her, we don't necessarily get a picture of what she looks like in reality. We know from earlier in the book that she's dark because she's been out in the vineyard working. But that's pretty much what we get as far as literal descriptions of what the bride looks like. But the important thing is to notice that Solomon sees her as beautiful, even though we don't necessarily get a description of what she actually looks like. And this is certainly the case when a man falls in love with a woman. He will see that woman as beautiful regardless of what she looks like physically. Because he isn't just seeing the physical woman, he's seeing the woman as a whole. And this is something that we ought to look for and we ought to recognize in our own relationship with our spouses because the husband will view the wife of his youth, the wife whom he loves, he will view her as beautiful because he sees in her more than just that which is physical. He sees in her the beauty of her love, her physical attributes as well, but also the relationship that they have, the closeness, the intimacy, and that beauty becomes more and more realized the greater the love grows. 
Thought number three, the bride's virtue. This last section talking about the garden, it's talking about the bride's virtue, meaning the bride is not engaging in sexual misconduct or sexual activity outside of marriage with the groom. What's going on here? The bride is remaining virtuous. She's saying, my body is a walled garden. And until it is the appropriate time, Solomon is not going to get in there. And it's just a beautiful picture of biblical sexual ethics that we see playing out. What happens here? Solomon, the groom, he is looking forward to the time when he's able to enter into that garden. He's looking forward to the time where he is no longer walled off, where he's able to consummate their relationship. And that's just natural. That's just a part of the created order that as we devote ourselves to one another, we devote ourselves to one another physically. I mean, this just is a part of human relationships. But it's a beautiful thing to see that even in this grand epic love poem, that the virtue of the bride is seen as something good. It's something about her that's lovely. It's something that makes her more desirable. And this is something that we need to apply more and more these days. Where sexual liberty is seen as a great virtue, we need to realize that refraining from that, that devoting ourselves to biblical sexual ethics is a greater expression of love, and it ultimately is one of the things that will make us more lovely to our future spouses. These three thoughts come from the assigned reading of Song of Solomon, chapters 3 and 4. If you'd like to read through the Bible with me, you can do so by subscribing to this channel, by clicking on the link in the description, or by joining the Facebook group Through the Bible, where we are reading the text of Scripture together.